Yep. So she knows that uh, it's almost certain to come down to a sprint, 90% sure. So she's just going to wait and wait and wait. New Zealand, of course, no sprinter. They want somebody up the road, and that was a good attack. Certainly was. And this is Katie Boyd that's going. Boyd trying to jump clear, reaction immediately from South Africa. Pooley just crouching down in that very low streamlined position to enjoy the uh, aerodynamic pace setting of the rider in front from South Africa. But Boyd, he's been pulled back immediately. You can see the difference there. Once again, Boyd pedalling really hard. Five wheels back down and they're freewheeling. And that's the difference on a flat course. It's so easy to take shelter, it makes it almost impossible to get a breakaway going. The only way it can happen is if there's persistent attack after attack after attack, and the only way to actually get everybody else working as hard as those trying to make an escape. Just near the back there for England, one of the uh, competitors was Emma Trott. But they've all ridden very strongly. It is a superb team, this. Trott and Colclough based near Oudenard in Belgium and of course Lizzie Armitstead uh, lives near to Antwerp they ride on the European circuit throughout the whole of the year and all the World Cup events Nicole Cook of the favorite she's the one that's forced really to uh, stay at the head of affairs because she hasn't got team riders for her now well a couple more of the Indian team deciding they're going to call it a day that's Vallea and uh, the day's finished for Chadari as well, number 22. And they've stayed in there a long time. They have. And uh, I just wonder how often they get to ride in events like this. They probably compete in the Asian Games, but probably the only time. Cook, you can see, just back there now, taking uh, a position always near the front of the peloton. She's edged forward as this race has gone on, as she's lost teammates and it's become more serious. Back up to uh, top six now, and I think it's for the last 20 k's, well, 15 k's of this race, that's where she's going to want to stay. Sri Lanka have lost their lone entry, you saw her in the pits, and this field really has thinned down, and they're starting to watch each other. It's as though the sprint's are already beginning to build up, Chris, but they've got over a lap to go. Well, New Zealand must be scratching their collective head now, trying to work out just uh, how they're going to break this race apart. They're going to find that very difficult. The only way they can do it is persistent attacking. They've found that uh, a couple of ways to do it. Attack just before a corner, or there's a couple of places that give a slim possibility, but uh, the circuit almost designed to be a sprint finish. Connor place again. Taking that right hand, that glorious blue sky above, but it is very, very hot and humid, particularly for a long, long road race. The longest of all the disciplines in the Commonwealth Games for the uh, the women competitors of all the different events. Pooley just dancing on the pedals in the middle, making sure that nobody here can give uh, the England team the slip. Colclough coming through on the right. Sharon Laws is there as well. In fact, the whole team is riding magnificently. Lucy Martin up in the mix, and right in the wheel, saving those sprinting legs, is, of course, Lizzie Armitstead. Well, there she is, we can see from the helicopter shot, right in the middle of the peloton. Really does take some uh, technical skill to be able to keep yourself in that position when the whole group is uh, in fluid motion all the time, people coming around the outside. Uh, trying to uh, get in those favoured 5th to 15th places where you're doing no work at all, but uh, you're not getting a whiplash effect out of the corners. You're still getting plenty of shelter from the other riders. Stage wins in the Tour de Loud this year. Armitstead and, of course, the International Ardech. So she can mix it with the best in the sprint. She's uh, used to rubbing shoulders with Marianne Voss of the Netherlands. And there's nobody in the field here can sprint as fast as Voss. So Armitstead has got the tools in the draw to compete with Rochelle Gilmore. And she's certainly on a course like this going to give Cook a run for her money. I've seen Willemsen take a feed and justly deserve the amount of work that she's uh, done to this point as they come up to the bell. One lap to go in the Women's Commonwealth Games road race. 14 kilometres remaining. And 
These are the survivors of the peloton that set off two and a half hours ago. 58 took the start, and these are the leading contenders for the gold, silver, and bronze medals. The whole of the England team are present that took the start. Armitstead, Colclough, Laws, Martin, Pooley, and Trott. And the race has been built from the England perspective to set up a sprint finish for Lizzie Armitstead. Australia, they've worked well, and their big favoured rider is Rochelle Gilmore. And let us not forget the lone survivor for Wales, and there she is, three back, Nicole Cook, who is the reigning Olympic champion, former world champion, and she has won the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games as well back in 2002 in Manchester. So inside the concluding 14 kilometres. Nicole Cook taking some food on board there with just 14 k's to go. I can only hope for her sake that that's insurance. I'm sure it is because it's very late to, uh, to be feeding in this race. You will get benefit from that about half an hour after you've finished. So uh, let's hope that's not indicative that uh, she's uh, having a little bit of bother. I think not. I'm going to speculate on how this final lap's going to unfold, Chris, because uh, they've got to watch for any lone attackers, surprise attackers towards the end, particularly from riders like Willemson of New Zealand. Well, the Australians are going to want to keep the pace very high. I think we're going to basically see two sets of lead-out trains. Australia, I think, probably got the edge in that over England. New Zealand will want to attack, but they need to do that soon because once they get to within five, six kilometres of the finish, the, uh, the Australian team will start to line it out and increase the speed to the point it will make it almost impossible. It's not discount Canada either because they've got Tara Whitten in the mix. And she is uh, a rider with track speed. So Witten could be an outside bet here for a medal. So Pooley once again at the front. For Witten, she'll need to take advantage. It really just comes down to who's in the right wheels because uh, everybody will be fighting for uh, Gilmore, Cook and uh, Armstead's wheels. So if Witten found herself in that position, she could benefit from the lead out. And as you say, find herself in the hunt for a medal in the sprint. And we can also speculate on the possibility of one of the riders trying to jump away and spoil the party if the big teams didn't want to chase her down. You can never discount that. But it's all going to happen very, very shortly. The medal contest will be decided here in this women's Commonwealth game road race. First held back in 1990 in Auckland. There's Willemson. You just got a glimpse of her. Third, fourth Kiwi back, actually. Just wondering if she's got anything left in the tank. She's certainly been the most aggressive rider of the uh, of the race. And when you think uh, it's only two weeks since the monsoon season ended here, when it was still throwing it down with rain, but it's certainly changed dramatically now. Canada, three up here, Chris. So they're obviously looking after the interests of Witten. Well, they haven't been... Uh present all the way through they haven't been covering the moves perhaps they've been keeping their legs fresh Nicole Cook on the left ever present now watching for any move that could be dangerous she's got the Australians as well watching her you feel it building all the time now can't you perhaps they're all, all resigned to a, a sprint finish now Nicole Cook carrying the hopes for Wales there she is in those uh, green red and white colors australia just nosing ahead of her and i think we're going to start to possibly see the presence of lizzie armistead she'll start to move through the wheels now to uh, take a, a better position near the front I'm just wondering who it is that's going to like the touch paper and <laughs> uh, start the attacks because i feel sure that as soon as somebody starts to attack the speed will say stay high all the way to the line and it's uh, the only way to force the big teams into making a choice, lead out the sprint or keep the race together. And in that the hesitation making that decision, there may be an opportunity for somebody to slip away. It's not, like... going to, not going to be too long now. They will not be able to contain their patience, and I feel that the attacks could come from the Kiwis, who do not have a big sprinter. They have uh, signal their intentions throughout the race, and I'm just waiting to see if they're going to start to do that again. Look out for Willemson. I don't think we've seen the last of her, and she's about six back at the moment with that multicolored hard shell helmet.